Green light and blast off. Great start there from Patrick O'Donovan. Not bad at all from Stephen Jones in the number 19. Those two lead the way as they come down into the Chess and Strip for the first time. Then Billy Alexander slots into third place. And Ewan McGuinness, son of TT legend John McGuinness, is in fourth position. But a great start there from Patrick O'Donovan, continuing where he left off yesterday. Had an engine failure in Q3, but he is back with a bang in the final. Going very nicely out of the Devil's Elbow up Harry Hill. And the 17 year old's getting a real workout from Stephen Jones, the reigning champion. Goes to the wide line at North Bend Hairpin. May try and get the cut back on the inside, rides the curb. He's throwing everything at it. He really is, yeah. And the kitchen sink trying to go down the hill. And O'Donovan knows that goes defensive as they come in towards the bottom bend of Paddock. Not able to find his way through there with Stephen Jones. O'Donovan there despite being a very young man, is very experienced in terms of rally cross contact as well. We can see and dramas from our commentary position for Billy Alexander, who's made a hash of the final chicane, has spun it round and has dropped himself out of podium contention then in this RX 150 final. But at the front, it is still Patrick O'Donovan that leads the way. So Billy Alexander's race looks like he's come to a premature end as he pulls off to the side of the circuit. That is a big shame there for the Scotsman, but Stephen Jones getting it all crossed up under the brakes into the top of Harry Hill, trying to find his way through on Patrick O'Donovan. This is as close as we've seen them racing all weekend, and Paddy O'Donovan has really got the pressure being put on him now. Coming up to a yellow flag zone because Billy Alexander's buggy is parked on the exit of the chicane to Patrick O'Donovan and Stephen Jones into the yellow flag area now, but it's the Motorsport UK Academy member, 17-year-old college student Patrick O'Donovan, who leads the reigning champion Stephen Jones out of Chessons. They're out and clear of the yellow flag zone now, and O'Donovan is putting the hammer down, just trying to keep clear of Jones into the elbow. Trying to put a bit of daylight between himself and Jones, isn't he, really? This is now a top two scrap for position. Of course, jokers are going to come into play, so you wonder whether Billy Alexander, uh, sorry, uh, whether uh, Scott is going to uh, do something to try and uh, find his way through by opting for an early joker compared to Patrick O'Donovan, but he might not need to, but Paddy goes for the defensive line down the bottom of the hill. They're coming into that yellow flag zone, so no passing through those final corners, and Scott is going to know that then as they come through the chicane and over the timing line, and he does go joker then, does the number 19, does uh, Stephen Jones then, I should say, rather. Uh, he goes in from second position into that joker, tries to undercut then, uh, Patrick O'Donovan, and he is going to have to see whether that strategy works out. You look at Ewan McGuinness showing really improved pace. He's sticking with the reigning champion. Ewan is still there, but has got his joker still to serve. So that might show how the pace of Jones, uh, the, the pace of Stephen Jones and O'Donovan really are in a class of their own at the top of the field. And now it's all eyes on Jones' pace to see where he will emerge when Patrick O'Donovan disappears into the longer route. We're on lap four of six. He's only got two chances left now before the race is over. The gap has increased there to Ewan McGuinness, so he's certainly quicker uh, than the young man who, of course, is the son of TT legend John McGuinness. Over the curbs they go, and here comes Patrick O'Donovan through the joker then. So where is Jones going to emerge in relation? It's going to be very close indeed. They're going to run very close on the exit of Jesson's Drift, but it's going to be advantage to Patrick O'Donovan then. But Stephen Jones is not going to take that line down into the left-hander of the Devil's Elbow. They go, but O'Donovan is wise to that. He's got it sewn up. He's got the lead. He's got trap position, but runs it a bit wide. Jones has got the outside line into the top of the hill. He tries to squeeze O'Donovan, there's contact into the top. O'Donovan has to hold it on the brakes here as he goes through, but Patrick O'Donovan does hold on to the race lead. Brilliant stuff between the two, all that work for the engine rebuild for Stephen Jones over Sunday is paying off because he is super, super competitive today right on the rear of Patrick O'Donovan, who triumphed last year in December when he made his RX-150 debut. He is rapid as ever, and now has built a gap with three quarters of a lap left to run. Steve Jones had a really poor run through that chicane, got it all crossed up coming through the final bend of Paddock, and that has cost him time, ultimately, and a chance at challenging for this race lead. Then very close indeed it has been throughout the entirety of the day between Paddy O'Donovan and Patrick Jones, but it looks like O'Donovan is slowing potentially at the top of the hill there. I wonder whether the technical problems he had earlier on are coming back to bite him in the backside, and you can see that they are because Stephen Jones is going to go try and go around the outside. O'Donovan's not going to take line down, tries to squeeze him onto the grass. Well, this is getting very frantic indeed, but Patrick O'Donovan surely has got this one sewn up. Rough and ready racing in the RX 150 final, but it is Patrick O'Donovan who makes it two from two.